I didn't know so many people were uh, new to DVD. Uh, there are a lot of people who've never seen this game before, or just <laughs> have heard about it but don't want to spend money on it or don't uh, think it's that cool of a game to play. There are other people who bought the game and are pl trying to play it, but they don't know exactly what to do and it makes them really frustrated. I know I felt this when I first played the game. I was like, man, I cannot get a single kill to save my life. But I ended up watching some YouTubers and stuff and figured out how to play this game. And it is mind-blowing how much stuff there is into it. Today I think we should look at the killer because the killer is the hardest part or the hardest character to play. Uh, you can either be a survivor or a killer. I think killer is harder just because you have to rely on yourself and yourself alone. And I thought it would be appropriate to teach people exactly what to look for as a killer. So killers get their four basic perks, right? And those can be any, any perks you pick up in a blood web. They have their power and they have two add-ons. And then they, can, they get an offering which they can bring. I always recommend, whether killer or survivor, bring ones that give you a blood point bonus at the end of the game. Just because you pick up so many of them. Like, if you look here, I have four, seven, eight, four. And then in the next level, I have two, two, six, three. Might as well put them to good use. Because you're constantly getting them as you level up. So you put one of your offerings on and then you can put on add-ons if you want to or you don't have to, it really doesn't matter. But when you go into a game, you want to make sure that you take full advantage of what you have. That is why I always put on the blood point bonus because bonus blood points make your killers level up faster or survivors level up faster, which leads to you having more stuff at your disposal. If you have three perk slots open, don't just use one perk. Utilize all three, however many you have unlocked perk slots. Add-ons. Now, add-ons could be a little tricky. Um, I tend to use ones that I have a lot of. Like, I have six uh, dragonfly wings. I also have 12 bog water. Why not use bog water? And maybe I'll use this um, dead fly mud. I don't know why that took me so long to register in my brain. Or you can use a rope necklace. I think I'm actually going to use a rope necklace instead. I got 19 powdered eggshell and if you don't use it it just sits here and it just keeps collecting and collecting and collecting. Might as well use them. Now if you only have one of something well you might want to wait until you learn some certain things that work well with certain add-ons and stuff but that's something you can look into uh, on a wiki page on a forum for Dead by Daylight or YouTubers. YouTubers make wacky builds all the time with their characters. Might as well look at one of those. But I thought today I'd use the hag and teach people what to look for as a killer and how to best optimize the time you have with each one. Well, first of all, you want to use, uh, just sort of starting out, you want to get good at the trapper, the wraith, the hag. And the hillbilly if you want to. The reason why you want to do those is because they're really good in loops. The wraith not so much, but he's a stealthy killer. You do that. Most of the killers do not, aren't very good in loops. For example, Freddy, the cannibal, Spirit. Early game, these killers are not good at all in loops. Loops is basically when someone runs around a pallet and then they throw the pallet down. What you want to be able to do is to end those loops as fast as possible. And you can do it with Trapper by placing a trap, either before the chase even starts, which I might make a video on Trapper today, I think I am, or as the hag uh, by placing one of her teleport things. You can do it as the uh, Wraith by sneaking up right on the survivor and uncloaking. You get an easy hit and now they're one shot throughout an entire chase. But people like uh, uh, the Cannibal, 
Leatherface, Freddy, they don't have anything to help them at those pallets. So you're basically doing yourself a disfavor by using those killers, especially when you're new to the game. So if you're new to the game, I recommend you just learn the game. You learn how the processes work. You learn when, what generators to look at. You shouldn't be worried about the two generators closest to you. Because if someone spawns there, that's bad news bears for them. And the game just doesn't allow that to happen. Which generators to look at, how to run a 3 gen strat, uh, which means you have 3 generators really close together, and how to avoid certain loops, and how to manipulate the survivors to be in a worse position than you. It sounds really, really complicated, and that sometimes it is, but if you learn about it now, and you play the game, or even just playing the game enough, you'll learn really really quickly what those things are I'm gonna play as hag her power is she places these triangles on the ground and if a survivor steps close to it uh, an image of her pops up basically like a little 3d hologram jumps out of the ground and I can teleport to that within a certain range now she is really good for stopping pallets because if you have one at a pallet you can teleport to it and smack a survivor not, not at a pallet, but near it enough to where it renders them running around useless. So they can't run around the pallet three times because you already smacked them. And that would just be a waste of the pallet for them. So basically with killers like Hag, you want to set certain things up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up right here by placing a trap right there. And what that sets up for me is if somebody tries to run up there to do that generator, well... <laughs> I know exactly where they are. I just saw that dude up there, so I'm gonna place a trap at this generator so they, if they do it, I know about it, and then run over to try to get this guy. I don't know exactly where he went, doesn't really matter all that much. Placing stuff by generators uh, as the hag is really useful, not so much for the trapper, but trapping pallets is 100% the best thing. So if they throw a pallet, one of the best things to do is break said pallet. If they throw the pallet down, unless you think you can mind game the pallet, don't worry about it. Oh wow, I'm an idiot. Freaking boosted. So you notice how she's not running to any pallet, she's just kind of sort of running around. She dropped the pallet, I break said pallet. Pretty simple. Place a trap here so this loop can't be used. Bingo bongo. I'm gonna hit her, get her injured. Oof. So I can either go for her or destroy this jet. So the biggest thing you want as to do as the killer is to make sure there are less people doing gens. So right now, she's not doing a gen, and that other lady, if she's smart, is not doing a gen. The reason for that is they are injured, and you never want to do something as you're vulnerable as a survivor. If you're vulnerable, then... Bad news. Where the heck did she go? Oh, I missed. So, to help me at this loop... There's a trap right here. Wow, that was a good dead heart. So this is a pretty good survivor, but this is basically what you'll see. Now I'm not the best killer in the world, I never claim to be, but I know how the game is played and how it should be. So right now I have one hook, there are three generators left. I'm in a pretty bad spot. As the hand, it is perfectly acceptable to trap right here. Hey, I see you. I figured she'd take that window. So right now I have three survivors not doing anything. Which is pretty good for me, pretty bad for them. Act like I'm going in there, fake it. Man, I just do not like this map. 
All right. So I know there's somebody upstairs. And there are two people. Wow. This is not a really good game for them. And there's somebody doing the generator above me. I'm actually going to go other than why not. There, you can break these. Walls are. I'll go for you, why not? Oh, hello. Alright, so what I've created right here is really good gen pressure. Right? Because those people are going to be healing. He is down. People are on the hook. They're going to be pretty worried. Yeah, I'm not swinging it. Oof. I don't know why I swung. So what I have right now is really, really good gen pressure. Two injured people. Uh, I know you gotta get hurt. That dude trying to do this gen. It's just, what I've created here is a really bad situation for the survivors. So this dude's pretty, pretty done on hook. Ah, there's my trap. Everybody's been hooked at least once, so what I'm setting up here is actually really nasty for the survivors. Breaking pallets, make sure that's one of your priorities as a killer. Leaving pallets just means there's another way for a survivor to escape a chase, which is something you do not want to happen. So I kind of know where the survivors are at right now. Ooh, I missed that. Yeah. Wasn't gonna miss that though. So I know there's somebody over here. This guy, almost dead. I know there's a dude above me. Okay, because I can hear him. There's a guy working on that generator right there. Guy over here. Did he finish that? Really? Eh, whatever. I didn't know that gen was almost done. Or else I would have pushed it harder. Yeah, that ain't gonna pan out too well. Now what I have here is even better pressure. So I have two survivors down, or two survivors not doing gens, three survivors not doing gens, they're all really vulnerable, let's see you up there, man I just smacked right into that freaking wall like an idiot. Ooh, you might have gotten a perk I wanted. Oh, I thought he went in the locker. Oh, well. If I could, I'd moor you. That sucks. That really just bites. Alright, so what I have now? Gen pressure. I know that dude's healing right there. One dude's dead. So now there are three people needing to only do one gen. Yeah, I was like, he saw that. Yeah, I'm not very good. Leaving that pallet just would be. There you go. Oh wow, thanks for uh, telling me that.
Dang it. Man, I suck. But, uh, not swinging at everything. Holy crap, that was literally my next thing I was going to talk about. Yeah, don't swing at everything, because you will miss, especially at longer range. I could have ended that chase, I don't know, 10 seconds earlier, which 10 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but in this game it is. It's huge. 10 seconds can win you a match, or lose you a match. So they're probably not going to go to this generator, but might as well have trapped it. They're going to be at that one, or that one, or even both. So they're not at this one. That means they're all the way over here on the other side of the map. So what I've created here is a little catch-22 for them. They can either finish the generator, and be all, be all dandy, or they can have let that die, die, die on the hand. He thinks I'm stupid, which I'm not. He thought I was going to teleport there. I think he used his dead hard. Dead hard, me. Thank you. Ooh! See, don't swing at everything. That's exactly right. Swing at stuff that makes sense. If that makes sense. So I didn't swing earlier because you had the perky dead heart, which means she can avoid any of my uh, swings. She's immune to all damage for that short burst and would have cost me a lot of time. You were over here somewhere. Yeah, that was... Wow. I actually thought you were so stupid you were going to stay there. Yeah, don't swing at everything, guys. Remember. Monkey. Uh, not monkey see, monkey do. I try... I don't know, I just feel like that some of those things should hit, but they don't. And this is how you get looped, guys. This is how you get looped. This is what you want to try to avoid. Uh, he went the wrong way. I don't know why I hesitate. Hey! Man. So that was a, that was a case of Lot not following in his own device. And I hate that I'm doing that on the one episode that I'm trying to give advice for people. But basically what you want to do is try to avoid people who can loop you like that. Because that loop is pretty much impossible. Impossible to stop. Alright, he might escape through the hatch. Which is fine. Which is fine. A 3k kill game is pretty solid. I don't know why I'm running that way. So I closed the hatch. So he's not at this door either. So he's in an okay spot. Either of us can win this. Uh, he can either open the door and escape because he's at full HP. Or I can kill him. So, as a killer, you want to try to have good sight of both gens. I saw him go to open this door. Yeah, that probably hurt. And she sounded like she liked it when I hit her. Dang. <laughs> but ha patrolling both gens of active G, it's a lot of people should do. Not gens, exegates, sorry. I spoke. 
Happens to the best and worst of us. Happens to all of us. All of us equally. No one is more subject, depending on your best or worstness. Basically, I played an almost flawless game. Uh, besides the fact that I missed a bunch of uh, hits and I let them do a lot of generators. But besides that fact, uh, good gen pressure, I was able to create pressure when there seemingly was none. They got those gens done super quickly, but as you can see there, I came back and I won the game hands down. You know, I, Obviously, it didn't just come down to luck, it came down to pressure. I was able to get those survivors down, right? and only have one person working on a gen at the time. If one person is working on a gen, guess what? <laughs> those other three people are doing nothing to help them progress through the game. So while those other three people are not doing anything, and that one dude's doing the generator, the, gen the generator speed is cut in a fourth. Well, technically, uh, not a fourth, three-fourths. But if you want to get even more technical, it's cut into... Woo, excuse me. It's cut into two thirds because, as a killer, you should always be chasing at least one survivor. So, if you hook a survivor and you want to go and chase, chase one survivor. Don't try to double fist. If you smack a survivor and you see another one, you can go for that other survivor because that survivor is going to want to heal, which takes time off of them doing generators. Your entire goal is to make sure no one's doing the generators. If everyone's doing the generators, well then. Bad luck for you. It's gonna suck. But if no one's doing generators, then that's good news for you because it buys you more time. If I wouldn't have gotten those three people who uh, who were off those generators, I 100% would have lost that and two or three people would have escaped. But because I was able to apply pressure, not just gen pressure, but pressure as in there aren't chens being done then that's what caused me to win the game so it makes a lot of sense to me your entire goal is to try to make sure nobody's doing gens and you're getting hooks so it normally goes you get one hook and then a generator pops right then you're on a good track and then you want to get two more hooks then the next one pops and then the rest of the game is pretty much yours if that's the track you can do. I obviously was not on that track. But what I was able to do is pr get enough pressure that it didn't matter. It bought me so much time that I ended up winning the game. Uh, some advice you should follow. Don't swing at everything. Uh, that's I did that a lot in the game because normally I thought I would hit those because I played the game a lot. I know what should hit and what shouldn't. I thought that that would hit, they didn't, because I suck, but if you don't know how far a lunge is or anything else, don't try to swing at it. it don't, if, when a pallet's down, right, so your, your pallet's down right here, I'm going to show it with my mouse cursor, if a pallet's down, looking at it, try to loop it and loop it and loop it, the best thing you can do is just break the pallet and try to move on with the chase. You are faster than a survivor. The survivor will eventually either lose the chase or you'll lose the survivor. One of those two things will happen. And that's why I recommend you use Trapper because you can just trap the pallet. If the pallet's trapped, that entire loop is completely useless to the survivor. If I have a Fathom Trap, I used it once in the game, and then that goes off, that scares survivors to not do it. Just make sure you're not lunging for things that you might not hit, right? I'm a complete hypocrite when it comes to this, but I highly recommend because one of the people got a whole chase out of it. Just because I swung too early, they were able to use their balance landing and go up top. It added 20, 30 seconds to that chase, which is terrible. You want to make sure you want to try to get a hit in a chase, 15, 20 seconds, hit. Then 30 seconds and then a hit. That is an optimal chase. That is like, okay, you can win the game if every chase is like that. Or most chases are like that. You shouldn't try to 
go for one survivor the entire game because if you go for one survivor, there's no pressure on the gens. Three people are doing a gen, and three gens get popped. And then what happens when three gens get popped? Oh, crap. Now I have one person who's on the hook. We don't know if he's dead or not. And now I, it's two when I only have one hook. And you have absolutely no pressure there at all. You basically threw the match, just tunneling one survivor. So what you're going to want to do is limit loops. Make sure that they can't loop a billion times. And those are best done with Trapper and Hag. Uh, out of the free ones, of course, there are other, uh, like Clown, Pig can do it pretty well, Demogorgon, Plague. But as of what you have available to you, especially when you're, if you're watching this video, you're probably only going to have these people. Limit the loops. Make chases shorter and apply pressure. That's basically what I wanted out of this. This is going to be a pretty long video, and I'm going to hopefully I can get that Trapper video out to y'all. But yeah, y'all know my outro throughout this whole coronavirus thing. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. I hope this all made sense to y'all. And if you have any questions, be sure to comment. And be looking out for that Trapper one, and I'll show you exactly how to use the Trapper. I'm pretty tired, so yeah, if, that, if I sound dead inside or I can't think, which I normally can't, bear with me. Uh, if you're still watching... Good on y'all. Alright, thank you. Have a good night.